You're listening to Cardi Nerds Weekly. going on everybody this is james grandmaster facts voice and you are here for another segment of party nerds news i of course i have my partner with me jorge vergara ready to do this ready to talk Yo. about this i'm excited all right so a lot has basically gone out this week especially in the world of comic book news but yet and first and foremost yesterday we got the uh premiere of werewolf by night which was the one shot by marvel on disney plus what was your initial reaction of this I had no idea what the hell was a werewolf, werewolf by night. I'm like, what the f- is this, dude? You know, um, I did see like little, uh, I saw the trailer. I was just so confused. At first, I thought, oh, God, here we go. Marvel trying to be like uh, Sin City, the movies. Remember Sin City? <laughs> by Robert yeah, Rodriguez. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, I, you know, I had no expectations. Um, but be, right before I started watching, I quickly browsed on the internet that this comic has history. And it goes way back. A lot. You know? Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to save that uh, and I'll investigate later after I'm done. And then when I was watching it, it's like, wow, this is really creative. This is gave, gave me like, again, like Castlevania vibes. And, you know, this is set in the 1930s, right? Yeah. yeah and- well, well, I wouldn't think that the setting is 1930s. The settings actually might be present day. But if we're talking about like the aesthetic of it, yeah, it looks like 1930s, like a 1930s Lon Chaney Wolfman. My initial reaction, because of course, just being a, a slightly knowledgeable, and I know I'm not like totally knowledgeable of, of Werewolf by Night, but I have no, of course, I understand that Moon Knight's first appearance came from a, a Werewolf by Night uh, comic book. Of course, uh, understanding the correlation between Man Thing and uh, Jack Russell's character in werewolf by night and how they coexist is basically bringing forth monsters into the mcu okay which let me stop you there big deal got you monsters not mutants monsters all right are they so when we're we're bringing up uh just modern day monsters dracula is a part of the marvel universe werewolf by night being a part of the marvel universe they're not mutants Uh, dracula uh, could be a mutant nah you know who's a mutant santa claus Jesus is a mutant too. Jesus is a mutant too. <laughs> He's on the mutant database. That's what I'm confused about. So monsters, okay, they're not mutants. They're like basically its own thing, like gamma ray, uh, you know, hulks and all that. Freak accidents. Mm-hmm. But then you have uh, monsters. Yeah. Yeah, because Man Thing, if we're if we're talking about his origin, like he tried to, uh, all right, his character, uh, Doctor Ted, uh, forget his uh, forget his last name, but he tried to duplicate the Super Soldier Serum. Okay, right, and it backfired. He's in the Everglades where where he uh, he currently has a home base, and something happens to him where he when he falls into the swamp where the DNA starts to. I guess, correlate with the super serum that he tried to make homemade at his crib. There we go. So like, it's basically like a, a, Florida, a Florida man scenario gone wrong. Okay, so it's like a Spider-Man yeah. or Daredevil accident. Right. So okay. like, but then it totally transforms his uh, his bodily, de- uh, you know, like his his composition. Totally, uh, totally frameless, gets taken out of context. And then basically like his power set. Yeah, he's durable. He has superhuman strength. And everything like that but if you saw like the way that he killed people in the show like when he grabs them and then all of a sudden they start to char that's an acid um reflux to people that fear him if he if he touches you and, and he senses a lot of fear the acid just comes out of his hands and tears you apart wow that's why his name was ted because he was once a human he would yeah he was once a human ted there we go okay i was like ted yeah why not he was once a, once or... a human Oh, I have a quick question about um, Jack Russell character. Um, Okay. Why wasn't his wolf CGI'd? And why he looked like he basically looks like uh, there was just put like hair on him and fangs and that was it. 
Well, I think they wanted to pay homage, of course, what you referred to earlier because of that 1930s feel to it. Even though it was made in present day, they wanted to give you those Lon Chaney Wolfman vibes. Okay. Um, he's not, the, and the thing is, from what we know of him in all the comic books, he looks exactly like he does in your background over there. So he yeah. he's not this essentially large Wolfman running around or werewolf running around or anything like that. Like he doesn't look like a lichen from Underworld. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, yeah. So, so th I essentially, with him looking the way he does, Man Thing being the person that's like kind of like CGI'd, and he looked totally aesthetically like he does in the comics, like that. And and he was played by um, if you play if you watch Book of Boba Fett, uh, Black Kersantan. Oh shit! Yes. Yeah, Black Kersantan, which is like if people called him Black Chewbacca, yeah. <laughs> but, but, no. but he was Man Thing. Oh wow. Same guy, Kerry Jones, I believe yep. is his name. Yes. That's right. God, okay. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, most of this kind of like correlates from, okay, so for one, Elsa Bloodstone being a part of this is like a big step forward because now we have, aside from Moon Knight and Blade that's going to get introduced, now we have Elsa Bloodstone. We have three out of the five people that are in Midnight Suns. So can you tell us more about Elsa Bloodstone? I had no idea. I knew about the dad well, from the intro. Right. Well, well, exactly. So Ulysses Bloodstone, there's a couple storylines. So okay. Ulysses Bloodstone, you you have one of those golden era comics where he was like, if if and there was like two iterations because retconning is just so damn specific and everything like that. So you have Ulysses Bloodstone, who had was granted immortality by and it was called the blood gem at that time. And you know how the infinity stones were called infinity gems at one point in time in the comics? Yeah. Well, the blood gem uh happened to arrive on Earth. It's a cosmic, uh, another cosmic stone basically being brought into the MCU. And it got attached to Ulysses Bloodstone, who was a caveman Neanderthal at that time. And it got mm -hmm. attached to his chest and granted him these, it granted him immortality. It granted him superhuman durability and pretty much garnered him the strength to, it started to glow whenever monsters were nearby. So, you know, when you saw that part at the end, of uh of werewolf by night where he at, where jack russell touched the bloodstone to try and give it to elsa yep. and he got repelled from it it's kind of like the the what is it the dorothy from um wicked witch of the west from from wizard of oz when she tried to touch the shoes and it wouldn't let her oh you know, yeah like yeah, that yeah. type of, like Wait, that type the, of deal the bloodstone has here we go uh, you know uh other let me guess there are six bloodstones you gotta collect oh, them all just, put them in a glove <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's just the one. It's okay. just the one. So um, necessarily, like, of, of course, they. Uh, I'm guessing that Ulysses had a plethora of monster hunters out there and everything like that. And upon him dying, and no, it was the the gem granted him immortality. So for him to die now, he probably had lived eight thousand years or anything like that. Oh. So it's funny that he dies now and the blood gem becomes available to find its new suitor. So in, in essence, you're thinking, okay, did, did Jack kill Ulysses and also man thing got captured in the long run. And now they're going through this like whole little process because they don't understand who Jack is. Like you don't, we don't uh, know what uh, happened to Ulysses at that time. A hundred kills. A hundred kills. And How? the thing is he's been under detection He's a human. Everybody thinks that he's he's human, but he's obviously a, a werewolf. So he's more so been hiding the fact that he's been doing all these kills to, for other monsters that are pretty much out there. Because you remember in the beginning, he saw the vampire head in the corner and he was like, oh, I've definitely fought that guy a couple of times. And it just so happens to be a, a vampire, a werewolf yeah. saying that he's fought a vampire a couple of times. Yeah. So I was like, oh, OK, so the existence of monsters has been in this whole thing. And if, if you remember from the that beginning sequence, they showcase the fact that monsters have always been a part of this thing like from jump. So how come they haven't so shown that, that yeah. how, how question, come they haven't shown their face? Yes, how like come that. they have not shown so, their face during the Marvel movies? <laughs> right. Well, 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 that's the thing. We're monsters are now showing their face. We're going to get mutants that are going to get introduced. So it's like all these people have been hiding under the realm, but mutants, of course, have been introduced little by little going forth so this is a good indicator but the fact that the blood gem exists and elsa bloodstone is there 
gives you a further introduction to the Midnight Suns. All we need is like Ghost Rider, uh, Brother Voodoo, maybe even if you want to throw Doctor Strange in there as an incarnation or anything like that. That's cool. But you got Moon Knight, Blade, Elsa Bloodstone. You're, you're pretty much on your way. So this Bloodstone, and, and say, I'm going to say this. Is Mephisto uh, part of this? Uh, will he be? Absolutely. No. Okay. No. <laughs> and That's I, a I popular hope... answer, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody wants Mephisto to show up. Yeah. Now, Ghost Rider comics could give you the introduction of Mephisto because they have. You know, if you remember, what was it? I think it was uh, Ghost Rider 2. Yep. Where basically, or it might have been part one, where he made that deal with Mephisto going forth. Because, you know, the origin story of of Johnny Blaze does not go down without Mephisto. Yep. That's right. just that's just plain fact. That's right. But yet going forward, when you got you got well, they might even introduce Man Thing. So you got Man Thing, Jack Russell, Elsa Bloodstone, Blade, Moon Knight, and any any Doctor Strange that you want to give. You want to introduce Brother Voodoo, you could do that. You could do um Doctor Strange. You have the Midnight Suns. Yeah. All right. You know for saying? villain, do you so, think Blackheart is near in your way? Well, only if we get those Ghost Rider uh, movies up and running. And we uh, and we heard in this little tidbit of news that, of course, Keanu Reeves had a uh, I, what was, it might have been either Jimmy Fallon or something like that, where he basically said that his dream project was what, Jorge? Uh, him being Ghost Rider. He basically said that that is the the dream project of his to be Ghost Rider. But here's my thing, man. He better not look like John Wick because Matrix killed it for me. I was like, damn, man, why is John Wick in the Matrix? He's got to change his whole look, bro. He's not versatile. Okay. Okay. Well, to be honest, it's like, okay, um, how do we do this? How do we how do we change it? Well, the thing is, it could be he could be uh, Robert Reyes um, or he could be Johnny Blaze. He could be what, what iteration of Ghost Rider could he be? Well, I'm sure there'll be two of them because of the multiverse. This is true. This is true. This is very true. <laughs> you know, so you know? hopefully. But, so that was that was a little tidbit of news. And it's funny because like we're getting all this like scary uh comic book uh news this week because spawn, of course, uh Todd McFarlane has been hinting at spawn remakes for years. Yep. And he finally got a writer attached to He's been he's been putting all these like little like uh hints on Twitter saying uh spawn update tomorrow and all this other stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, are we gonna get a trailer out of nowhere or anything like that? And it just turns out that we got he he attached the uh the scribes for what uh Captain America four and, and Joker also and the joke and the Joker movies. The head writer for the Joker, so the, right? I'm sorry. The head writer, yeah, head writer the, for the Joker. And the scribe and from Captain America, America 4. And scribes from Captain America 4. Jamie Foxx has been attached to this project for years. So it's, I guess, you know, this, I, and, and, and I, in a sense, I'm thinking, is he the right guy for the project? Or do okay. we need somebody new? Jamie Foxx has been attached to this for eight yeah, years. Yeah, but, but let me ask you this. There's no way that Michael J. White can reprise and reboot. I would think he could. I'm saying he's to still fit enough. He's still fighting. He's still, he's still fit. Yeah. yeah, he's in movies. Every like I see like action movies of his, I know they're probably like B list movies or something overseas or anything like that, but he still looks like he could kick some ass. Exactly, you know. Yeah, and he's got and he'll you know he's already he does stunt work and all that. He does martial arts, so that will make the production so much smoother than having an A list uh, actor Jimmy Fox and having five stunt doubles, you know, at a side and I don't know, man. Plus, plus they have the power of plus. the CGI and the special effects that can enhance the character. This is very true, very true. And and the thing is, we understand, of course, uh, outside of all of this news happening, that pretty much, you know. New York Comic Con was happening this week, and there was a lot of shit going down there, including the premiere of the Super Mario Brothers trailer, which looked kind of fire. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Video beautiful. game movies have been getting it right lately. Yeah, it's a, it's you know, all if, that fan backlash because the fans were not being heard. Right. So Sonic, Detective Pokemon. Now you got Super Mario Brothers, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. You know. You know? To be honest, like the storylines are starting to fit. They're starting to get better because that was like the one thing. Oh, and what is it? Last of Us is going to drop pretty soon yep. on HBO. 
So you have all these comic book adaptations being turned into live action movies that look pretty fire. Anime could never do it. I don't think anime could ever do a good live action, but the video games seem to be proven that yes. they could do it. Remember uh, Mario Brothers in the 90s with John Leguizamo? Yes, John Leguizamo, Bob Hoskins, who we know from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and Dennis Hopper as King yeah. Cooper. Good Jesus, this was a horrible <laughs> idea. I don't know how they did this. Next to Street but Fighter. The, but the, you know what? The funny thing is everybody was uh, laughing at the fact that Chris Pratt was going to be the voice of Mario when everybody was thinking this is going to be horrible if yeah. him, if he's vo if he's voicing Mario. The trailer didn't turn out to be too bad. No, they didn't want a stereotypical Italian speaking, uh, <laughs> the, the guy from the video game. It's me, Mario. It's me, Mario. Which I yeah. thought would have been cool. Well, Woke Nation would have a fit, bro. Really? Like, yeah. is it is it because that of a problem yeah. to have him with this with this high pitched Italian accent? I mean, again, it's me, they Mario. Old, they old bitch about it. Oh, this is racist or stereotypical. So you know what they did? They gave him a New York Brooklyn accent. It was perfect. New York Italian Brooklyn, Brooklyn accent. Brooklyn accent. That's right. But but last but not least, as far as our news today, was the appearance, and it's not the first appearance, but the appearance of Daredevil in costume in She-Hulk this episode this week. And not to say that, uh, of course, the, it, there was going to be the dumb folk talking about backlash because they're like, look what you did to my character and everything like that. But no, this is exactly who Daredevil is. The acrobatics. He was still Matt Murdock, exactly who we know him from the Marvel Netflix uh, show in the courtroom. And totally after the fact, if you want, if you remember him from the comics, that he is a full blown hoe. Woo! <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes. From the Netflix series. Absolutely. As well. Exactly. Oh, man. from the Netflix series. Don't let us go back to the comics because <laughs> I don't know if it's like a pity party for him being blind, but he grabs them. Yeah, man. So that's it for us today on a little bit of Party Nerds news. I appreciate everybody being here. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to us at the Party Nerds YouTube channel. This is James Grandmaster Facts Voice. Jorge Vergara. What up? Signing off. We are out.